Good evening and sorry. Welcome to the Community Engagement uh, Committee of the Board of Health Utilities. I think we've got a couple of folks tonight who have joined us, a couple of ambassadors who have joined us uh, via Zoom. Uh, so we got them all three on, Rob. Mike and Karen have joined. I've not seen it yet. Okay. So good evening, folks. Um, I I will take the time. I know it's been a minute since we met in late October, um, but I wanted to take a minute to introduce you. I don't know if he's going to stay on the committee or not, but one of our newest board members, uh, Stevie Wake. Stevie, go ahead and introduce yourself to the fine community ambassadors we have assembled. Hello, and uh, my name is Stevie Wake, and I'm the newest, one of the newest uh, board members. Thank you. Can I just say that? <laughs> 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 All right, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I know that uh, I heard from Mr. Scott today, Norm's not going to be able to join us this evening. Um, and I think I didn't hear from a couple of others, but um, maybe Bill Tricklin. I know we're just right at 6 30, so uh, hopefully, hopefully, they will. Um, just a reminder, I'm Rose Mulvaney Henry uh, on the board, and we've got Mary Gonzalez, uh, another board member here with us tonight, and Mr. Bill Johnson, our general manager. So thank you all for coming. I know it's uh, not the most ideal weather out there, but I think it's better than it was this morning. <laughs> there we go. Uh, everybody got an agenda for tonight? Okay, folks online, y'all can see the agenda on the screen, I presume. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so last time we talked about, you know, sort of doing a BPU 101, um, and we talked about some specific things about BPU that we feel like the community lacks the information on. And, you know, I, I put on the agenda just a couple of things we talked about and a couple of things I think we can probably do a better job of um, having discussions with the community. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about um, tonight specifically, we had folks suggest um, uh, to us that, you know, we, we may be engaged through NBR meetings, uh, other neighborhood group meetings and things like that. And I wanted to talk about the different ways we communicate this information today and then where this group thinks, um, you know, we're missing the mark because we're missing the mark somewhere um, because we all get, you guys do the same thing, right? And we all get called and emails all the time about various BPU issues. And all of the information, not all, a lot of the information is out there somewhere. And it's a matter of, I guess, directing the people and to the right place. So I just open that up for discussion on one, what we think should be included in a BP 101, you know, the series of educational series, and two, how we think we can conduct these kinds of uh, this, these information sessions. Anyone? I'd be interested to know who of you is in a, um, like a neighborhood group. Which one? Or save. Save. So there's one three, so we've got a neighborhood group. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some issues, CPU issues come up frequently in your neighborhood group? Oh, this is Karen. Um, the Strawberry Hill uh, neighborhood Facebook group often has uh, BPU come up, and the um, and then I run a Russian Hill group, um, and I try to share BPU information on that. Okay. So, what what do you all find would be helpful? more helpful to either share with your neighborhood groups or for us to implement or, or help you with? Um, 
Well, it seems like we get some pretty robust conversations um, related to BPU on the um, Strawberry Hill Facebook group. Um, I don't know who we're missing in that case. Um, I understand that younger people don't necessarily use Facebook, um, but um, I mean, it does seem like a good place for sharing um, information and correcting uh, misconceptions. I think the board president works really hard to pass along correct information as long as she has it um, to the Strawberry Hill group. But, but Karen, you would agree that that the the younger folks who may not who may not use Facebook, they do utilize the internet, right? Oh yeah. yeah. I um I'm just way outside of that target group. <laughs> so I'm I'm not sure if uh I'm not sure, you know, if they're using Instagram, if they're using TikTok. Um I don't think any of the people who are kind of neighborhood leaders are necessarily using those younger um, focused um, channels. Mm -hmm. um, so I think somebody who's more uh, ver well-versed in reaching out to younger folks um, could probably speak to that. Um, and then I guess um, I also try really hard to uh, post things in the Strawberry Hill group I mean, in the Russian Hill group in um, both Spanish and English, because I would say the majority of my neighbors are primarily Spanish speaking. Also, um, kind of a hybrid approach is definitely next door. About that earlier, I think people, you kind of see a different demographic on, on that. Thing. And that's just, I think that's every plan on next door. Well, and, and I actually talked to David Melhoff about that earlier today, and you know he indicated that our reach, if we're talking about Facebook, Twitter, or X, I know it's called X, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> um, and uh, um, we don't use. I mean, we don't push things out. We just talk. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Abet is that's right. Oh, okay. Welcome, Abet. Um, but maybe we should. Well, that's the point. I mean, so we've got Nick on staff now. I mean, mm -hmm. Nick is really young, and you know, he's he works for David. And but he said that our engagement, you know, we push information out on next door to the point, mm -hmm. and our engagement on next door um, completely just overshadows any other engagement that BPU tries. To do. It just does, and so. You know, we're we're reaching a ton of people by putting information out there. And I picked this up. These are over on the table over there. You all likely got one in the mail um, or via email, um, as, as I do. And you know, this is going to be published four times a year now on quarterly basis, right, Bill? And so, and for those of you who are on uh, Zoom, I'm just holding up a few key connections. And you know. There is so much information that's packed in here, and there has been a very concerted effort over the last couple of years to put as much in helpful information to the public as we can into this particular publication. And I understand the young people may not want to read this, you know, in this form, but the young people, which is Karen, why I asked about the internet, I mean, it's on our website, they can get it via email. Um, this is something we share on our social media you know, uh, outlets, and this particular, you know, this particular publication has so much information. And some of the things we're talking about, how do you sign up for the, how do you get utility assistance? Um, what do you do if the street lights out? What do you do if a power line is down? How do you conserve energy in the winter? Right? I mean, all of those things are in this particular publication. And so, you know, we have the information available at the fingertips. I think we're struggling with how do we get it? How, how do we, how better do we get it out? I think we also have to publish, um, I think it's once a year, the water report that comes out. And even though it's technical, information it's it's really a lot of good information that 
regular hero like me doesn't always know. But the point is important that I don't think you're a regular killer in war. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I, I, I have, I've really, you know, taken some time after our last meeting to think about this and think about all the ways, you know, that BQ attempts to communicate, you know, with our customer base, and we we seem to be failing. You know, in some respect, right? I don't necessarily think we're actually failing, but I think one of the things we have to remember is, um, as with anything, I mean, I'll call it marketing because I don't know what else to call it at this point. You know, you got to tell them, you got to tell them, you got to tell them again, right? You just got to keep, you have to keep reinforcing the message, right, of the information that we have. So, you know. And, 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 you know, one of the things we talk about, you know, going to NBR meetings and going to neighborhood groups, you know, I haven't heard anyone sitting here clamoring going, yeah, BP stuff comes up all the time in our neighborhood group meetings. I, I'm not sure that it does. I'm not sure that it doesn't. It really does. Well, it really does. I mean, I can only speak for my neighborhood. I can't speak for anyone else, but it does come up a lot. And I think a lot of it, because we are in the Northeast, so we're, we're dealing with a lot of older homes. Sure. Um, we're dealing with, again, like I mentioned, for the um, the efficiency of the home, and also you have a, we have a, um, an aging population, mm -hmm. and I'm one of them, and um, you know so your income, so we're dealing with fixed income. I mean, you know, Pastor Wake's right here; he's right up the street from me, his church and everything. So I think you have some of those dynamics. So of course, one of their largest expenses is going to probably come because many of them may own their own. Sure, they may own their cars or whatever. So they're made their most the their most expensive thing is going to be that probably that BP bill, especially if they live like me in a hundred year old house. That's probably not efficient, <laughs> you know. Um, so I think that makes a difference. So I think those are the reasons why it's coming up. But until we can address some of those issues and work hand in hand with our partners and getting that and having those allies, I think it's always going to be uh, a, a part of just a part of the conversation, whether it's negative or positive, because that's just the reality. Sure. Of some of our aging neighborhoods. Sure. Do you think they know how to apply for leave if they're eligible? Do you think many of them know that, or could they use the refresher? Or I think with the with three one one, I think that has helped. I think a lot of the social service agencies have done a really good job of trying to help with that. I think you know uh, DCS has done. You know they've done a really good job of of just educating and letting people know that that's available. I think a lot of the churches, a lot of the pantries, I think a lot of people are saying that message and getting it across. But, you know, are people, we still have to look at the numbers, are people actually using it? And and the ones that, can they really qualify for the services? Because you still have to be at a certain income level to, no. even, to even qualify for, for I want to say that, I think mean, Rose's question was, you know, is the information not available? Uh, and, and why is VPU coming up? It's not that information is not available, but they're having difficult time dealing with the the uh, with the cost of of, of uh, the utility. Mm -hmm. I think that's the main thing. I don't think communication is out there. I don't think there's a problem with communication. I think the problem is is uh, having uh, having the ability to uh, to uh, meet those expenses that they're they're. they're And, and do you think that's a result, CB, of um, you know talking about older homes that may not have the efficiencies that newer homes do? Some of that is going on. Most definitely, most definitely, it's part of. Well, and of course, and you know, I'm going to forget the name of the program, Bill, but the new federal program that is not yet available. <clears throat> um, that right. I mean, it's it's essentially an energy efficiency program from the feds. But is it a direct to consumer efficiency program? Hang on one second. It's up to fourteen thousand dollars per home, right? I think we talked about this maybe just a little bit last time. Once that thing becomes available, I mean that is something I think you know we all need to make a concerted effort to get that pushed out into the community and do whatever it is we can to to help folks. Um, you know, take advantage of it. 
right? Because this is not money out of their pocket to try and get their homes in a more efficient state. No, that's right? get, is that Kansas housing? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's KHRC. No, is that what you're asking? Yes. Uh, I don't know the fact that go at all. Um, I don't think so. We don't think so. Okay. Yes, ma'am. They do have a weatherization program uh, that is somewhere else in the neighborhood, uh, knocking on doors and at Sun Fresh, uh -huh. getting people to come to the monthly meeting that I have once a month mm -hmm. to sign up for the ECAN program. I right. have people helping them. They do, uh, my thing is nobody has windows, and that's the most expensive thing because I was uh, talking to the mayor to see if we can come up with something about windows because there, I'm having some money in now that's like 20 grand you know, or more. So windows is very expensive. And that's the one thing that they don't do. And I talked to them about that. She said, um, it has to be, you had to show that by putting in the windows, um, I can't, I, I won't try to explain it, but anyway, she was saying that, in other words, it has to make the cost uh, some kind of efficient to put in the windows, but they do go in and open up the home, you can get a new family, hot water heater, in the central area, I mean, they, they, do, uh, they do a lot, and your income really out surprised that, I think uh, I had one lady that I had talked to her about getting a hot water heater, and uh, she said her income was like, Forty-one thousand, and theirs was like forty, and I thought, well, that's better than anybody else. Most people say if you make twenty-five or thirty thousand, you don't qualify. Yeah. So, and that that's so low, you know, because I had talked to Sheree Davis about that, and she was talking about raising the bar on that because, you know, nobody qualifies to get Social Security and make twenty-five right. thousand dollars a year without retirement. You know, right, right, right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Karen Hunter Cambridge. Yes, Karen. Hi. Um, well, I, I a little bit of what people say, so excuse me if I've, I'm off base or, or repeating something, but um, I've been checking on the um, upcoming uh, energy efficiency tax credits coming up, and I I feel like I've run across websites that like where you can put in, I don't know, your state. Um, city um, income, uh, various factors, and sort of it spits out what you're what you're eligible for. Um, I don't think that I've seen anything for Kansas or for for our um, people who live within the BPU footprint, and that's probably because things aren't completely known yet. But um, something like that would be really helpful. Um, and and the other thing I was thinking of is um, like you know the uh, was it Vista the groups of volunteers that help people with tax preparation like people with lower incomes Vida Vida uh, it seems like something like that cross trained with these upcoming credits um, to help people navigate and and get the most of what they can. Um, qualify for um, would be needed. Um, but yeah, I think one-to-one -one or some one-to-one -one volunteers or something that steps people through a series of questions um, that's very simple to use, like a online, um, those two tools, because this is, this is pretty complicated. <laughs> um you know the number of credits and things so uh so we that's what i've been thinking about yeah. thanks here mm -hmm. so we gave the board an update last board meeting some of the federal funds we're tracking and rose of right some of these efficiency programs are in the pipeline or just not ready just yet but but uh, we're talking, like I've had a conversation with Representative Shuji Davis about getting involved in the state Kansas to make sure that this program is as easy as it possibly could for our community to work. We use them. We're going to do all we can to make sure we simplify things as much as we can to get information out. 
Here's where you go. We can establish a list of vendors that participate. We'll also provide that. And it won't be a recommended list from us. I don't want to tie that responsibility to us. They go to this guy, what's here on But it's, it's who, who is actually participating in the program, where you can go, and then hopefully there's multiple vendors in there. But this is really something that the state and the federal government has to work out with those individual vendors to make sure. The only thing we can really do at that point is say, here's where you go, here's the service that's available, here's your point of contact. So we can get there, I promise you, we can get that put together. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. And the United Way program, this is something new that you're working on. Which program? Mm -hmm. Is the federal program, program different than LEAP? Yes, yes, it is different. So the LEAP program is for the low income, and they they look at, at our list of people that are eligible, and then uh, you know, people have to apply for that, and then and once we get uh, Notice that payments are coming, we'll just make sure that that is created in the discussion of the county. But right. I, this think, I think the program, though, is like a different pot of dollars. I think that might be right. right. She was wondering if it, it's a different, it's federal money and sort of federal. Yeah. This program is going to be different because it's part of it for us helping replace. Uh, Having to make improvements on your home, that was going to actually go towards lowering your utility usage, lots of sticky windows, insulation, and things like that. So, now I've stated this earlier too. I'm really, I'm really glad that the federal government is moving in this direction because it really, it really goes towards fixing the problem as opposed to here's a few dollars to get you through the through the year and the problem mm -hmm. stays there. And then I know we're coming back talking about how do we actually get to the root of the problem. Is this a program that you all are working on putting together? No, no, no. If it's a federal program that uh, has, well, is in the process of being funded by the feds right now. And I believe it's going to flow through the state, I believe. And it hasn't, we don't have any detail from the state yet. So as soon as, so, I mean, you're a very influential woman, my friend. If you want to call Laura Kelly and see if she can yeah. fast track that, I, I think I, I put my money on I put my money on I know, I really, I really, you know, I had met with Cherie about, you know, and like she said, she was really, you know, I really shared some things with her that she wasn't really aware of, and she thought, wow, she didn't know that a lot of that she didn't understand. She didn't know about it, she just didn't know about it. And uh, like she said, I told her, I said, you know, they got, they got a lot, but you got to be below poverty to qualify. Right. And that's one of the real problems because, you know, you got seniors that's living on Social Security and they're getting, you know, they had good jobs and they're getting a decent pension, but now everything has exceeded the wages. So, hey, you get $2,000 a month today, there's no money with the prices of everything, you know? And uh, just like the wages haven't kept up, Nothing has stepped up. I mean, like she said, she didn't realize that this was happening, that the bar was so low. And that, like she said, they're going to have to take a look at some things and try to uh, raise it. You know, so because you know, how many people in the low poverty line making twenty five thousand dollars? None that's working. There's a lot of people that are working that their wages still got them in poverty. And, a lot in our community. It's a big part of our community. Good thing, good thing about the federal program we talked about is special events for people. Not often enough of the wrong. There is a calculation and I want to be on record. I think it's like 130, 150. I think it's 150. I think of, of the poverty level. Um, yeah, I have to look at the data. And I will, because again, the we've had actually two presentations on this that the staff has done 
and I'll get that information to, because it's all public information out to this group so you all can see that data um, and what it looks like and what this program is supposed to look like. But again, this is, um, you know, this is something we're not taking money out of consumers' pockets, right, to try to help them get their homes, um, you know, in a more energy efficient state. So, which, to Bill's point, that's really addressing the problem. It's not throwing dollars at the people at one bill. It's it's trying to rectify the problem. And I think it would be great too, and that so when you are going to the neighborhood groups, then you can say let and let them advocate and help them push because they're going to receive it a lot better if it's someone that they know and comes from their community. Um, so especially if it's going to be a state level or somebody feels it through the county, um, so we can have those allies or the churches and everybody. So that may be a really nice point where BP can come in and kind of talk about some of those, you know, services. And like you said, and I know LEAP is only for a certain amount of time, but, you know, it's a certain amount of time every year, and that, that time comes and goes pretty fast. Um, so, but anything that we can do to kind of help, and I think that could bring um, also leave you in a, in, a, in a real positive light and uh, promoting sorry, uh, the program that they had before. Um, and I, like I said, I personally knew quite a few people that came in and it wasn't income based and they did get a chance to get windows and furnaces and all those kind of things done, but it was also, wasn't it was underutilized. And so the money went back to the state and then so that left a lot of our population. So to your point, you know, um, we need to be ahead of the game and really be ready to roll out when it is ready to go out so that we can have these allies and opportunities to share it so that people that really need it, really qualify, can get it this time. Because like I said, a lot of people missed out last time and that was a, a major loss for our community when it comes to efficiency, for sure. Okay. Mike, yes, Mike. Um, I just wanted to, I guess, ask a question um, as far as uh, federal assistance. Um, from what I'm hearing, we don't have anything in place that is uh, federally funded uh, to help with energy assistance at this point. And the reason why I'm asking is, I work for North Carolina uh, Medicaid uh, in the Department of Health and Human Services for the state of North Carolina, and they do have what they call a low income energy assistance uh, program that's federally funded uh, that uh, uh, assist eligible households to pay their heating bills. So. Um, Again, I wasn't sure if that was something that we um, in our uh, in what wait WICO um, has or the state of Kansas has. Mike, is that is that helping pay bills on a recurring basis or one time? Um, I believe it might be a one time. Yeah, and I mean, to me, that's certainly no different than the LEAP program. I mean, that's that's what the LEAP program does here. Um, that is that is a federal program. And um, well, I'm not going to talk about universal service or utilities right now. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> uh, but that is something you need to talk to Reese Sanders about. Um, well, right. I mean, yeah, the UG's got a utility assistance program, also very underutilized. Um, it's a one-time payment, though. They've got a tax rebate program, right? UG does as well. BPU now has a utility assistance um, program for seniors um, and and disabled folks um, that that we just put into effect uh, in last summer toward the end of last year. Toward the end of 2023. Um, I don't believe that. Well. So if you qualify through the unified governance programs, you automatically on this go around qualify for the BPU utilities. So that program is very new. Um, and you know, the the board 
sort of took it upon itself this year to try to put something like that in place. But those are the programs we have today, Mike. And and so there's nothing I know of that is on a recurring basis. Well, I guess the use of the utility assistance program actually is on a recurring basis. Um, okay. To help offset the the rate increase from uh, from July of uh, 23. Okay. I'm sorry to take everyone off track, but I, I just was curious. You're welcome. You're welcome. Would you refresh my memory? Did that show the amount of money go up on that, or did it stay the same? One hundred fifty thousand dollars. I believe that's what it's funded for. One hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. No, for the income level for people. To I believe it is. Is it thirty-five thousand? I thought it was thirty-seven. It did go up a little bit, didn't it? It's thirty-seven seven fifty, I believe, oh, which okay. I think is what it's the same as the uh, homestead. Right, the state. Then I they had increased it. Yeah, and I we thought, we follow what the UG did okay. because the state increased it. The UG increased it, therefore the UG yeah. followed it. Increased, but it increased a little bit. Yeah, yeah. no, it did for sure. Okay. Yeah. Now we have several agencies that help. We have Community Life, Avenue of Life. Then we have the LEAP program. So are all of those once a year? Can a person go to all three of those during the winter months? Well, now each individual agency, as you probably know, the VPU itself funds utility assistance. They have a hardship program and a utility assistance program that one of them, not both of them, but one of them is run through United Way, correct, or both? Both are run through United Way, and that money goes out into, I believe, 13 different, 11 or 13 different nonprofits in the community. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, I don't know the rules that I don't know. I should know, but I don't. Uh, although I've been told that I think you can do it one time. I think it's the one time. If it goes through United Way, that like food ministry in those 11, I think it's only one time. One time each one of them? Yeah. I did one time only. Oh, one time on the hardship and one time on use. Oh, so you can do well and leave. Right. Is that what you're saying, Rob? No, it's three years. Oh. You can give back back year, so you can only get one year. Yeah, you can get it year after year, but only once in that time frame. I think so. And there's 11 different. I used to know four of them, but that's the only one that they should be in. To my right. Cross lines, I mean, the, the usual suspects, the you know, Salvation like, Army, on the website. cross lines, and everything, so they should be. Just the usual, the ones that are already doing kind of emergency assistance already. Yeah, they're going to each other. Right. right. And yeah. I mean, some actually, as, you, as everyone probably knows, they grant money outside of what they're getting through the United Way from these people. So right. yeah. utilizing their own money. And there are some like like Kilo Women's Center, like they um they have a certain amount. And I think they have like Sister Bridget, I think she kind of caps it like two hundred dollars or whatever. But if you got it from you know Avenue of Life and everything, that like, she's not gonna not give you that if they can afford that. Yeah. So some of the not popular. Yeah. If there's really a family in need and they've used up their Eligibility. I know our day tries to yeah. fill out the community. And the same thing with the churches with their funds and stuff like that, too. So, but I, I just wish it was like an effort to just kind of, because like you said, still it does, that one time funding is not enough. And it may pay you to keep everything on, but you still got all of this, this back. I just wish that it was an amount that could really make a difference. Right. Either make the deal current or you know what I mean. Or no, like no, I, I hear you. And, and that's something, you know, um personally I would like to visit um about this year, um, because that's a recurring thing we're hearing. Mm -hmm. Um and and there has to be something between you can't do it ten times and you can only do it once. Mm -hmm. There has to be a the meeting there. I mean, we've allocated more money um from the board itself into these programs in the last two years. <clears throat> probably the, has ever been allocated by the board it's the board itself its own funds before and so um there, there we know there's a great need um but it's it's resource better than it ever has and so i'm not saying it's always going to be resourced this way but you know perhaps we can find a way 
to go between uh, one time only and this is, you know, just something I'm not going to say, you know, don't have, doesn't have a means to pay a bill, but, you know, somebody pays the means, right? I mean, we hate to say that, but, you know, there's bad apples everywhere. Yes, Rob. Madam Chair, if you're going to have your hand Yes, Karen. Oh, I, I I raised it when you guys were asking about the um, agencies because I I just pulled it pulled it up on the website. Uh, but but since you're kind of beyond that, I if you want to know the list of agencies, read them all. Uh, it's Avenue of Life, Catholic Charities of Northeast Kansas, Crosslines, El Centro, EOF Northeast C and D Center. Metropolitan Lutheran Ministries, Salvation Army, Vaughn Trent Community Services, uh, Lai Topeka, I don't know how you guys say that, uh, and EC Can East Central Kansas Economic Opportunity Corporation. Thank you, I appreciate that. So Karen, are you you're reading that off the BU website, right? Yes, it's um. It's a PDF that links from um, other agencies offering emergency utility assistance programs. As Rose talked about that, there are a ton of information on our website. If you're not familiar with it, then you're going to go to the, the uh, search section, type in what you're looking for, and then we'll take it. Right. I just don't know how many people are actually doing that. Going so to the website, and I just don't, I mean, I don't know what motivation is. Like you say, when something happens, we like to complain and share, but I don't know if people are actually, I the, the people that I work with, I don't know if they're they're actually going to the website to, to kind of to find things. I think some folks are. Do most of them have access? Okay. Okay. It, just, it just appears, I think a lot of it is just that capability. Some of our seniors are really struggling and, you know, um, you know, to even have the services and uh, to, to work the computers and the, everything's a QR code and I don't have anything against it or whatever, but, you know, you got to have a smartphone, you got to be able to take a picture, you got to hope that it, it does take and then it, hopefully it links you somewhere. But there's a lot of things that a lot of folks are, and not even seniors, there are some seniors that, <laughs> that are better at it. Than, than others, but it's just, yeah, I just think it's a combination. I don't, I mean, that's why when you were saying, I know it's expensive to print and send out. I think, okay, I might probably know a little bit about that, <laughs> sending stuff out, but you know, but you're going to have that different demographic that's going to want this. And then you're going to have the group that, and then you're going to have the group that wanted to go online and just glean pieces of it right. so it's so I, I like the fact that you guys are offering that well and, and as as the board member who looks at this and and literally believes i know how much this is to mm -hmm. print right yeah but i'm also i completely understand its usefulness i understand our demographics mm -hmm. and i understand that there is a significant amount of our population that needs this thing right it's not we can't expect everybody to go get the web or Facebook or wherever else. We're next mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah. I have a question, uh, Karen, again. Um, do you guys I, have fridge magnets? <laughs> I know that sounds silly, but mm -hmm. our neighbor sends out chiefs and royal schedules on these long magnets that have room for all sorts of printing <laughs> and we always put fr fridge magnets up and they're a really great um way to always have information at hand um so i was just thinking and, you and know Karen, you know if we do that there's going to be a segment of our customer base that wants to know why we spent money on fridge magnets. <laughs> oh, oh of course <laughs> <laughs> the way it goes to, right? Yeah. I mean, this, this is public fun. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I, I hear what you're saying. I hear where you're coming from, for sure. Um, yeah. I, I definitely use them, but I'm old. So. But when they need that quick information, though, when they, I still promote them in my parenting classes and my financial literacy classes or whatever, you need to know things, you know, in that moment. And so having that fridge magnet is something that you're going to go to. It's accessible no matter what. Everybody knows that. 573 91. Yeah. 
Uh, if they want to know when their power goes out or something like that too, we have to we have to train people how to react to circumstances and not and just be more you know and not be reactive to circumstances yeah. and being ready. And I don't know how to how to do that. Um, I know I work a lot with you know Matt May, the emergency manager, you know, and with the CERT team and community the community emergency response team, and you know just trying to get people ready. And I just think that I just wish more information was around that and around the efficiency and more of the wraparound services instead of us complaining about everything Let, let's work together you know if, if someone wants to come over and help make these houses more efficiency in an area where they were the greatest need let's work with that group to bring them to our community you know one house at a time or you know or let's let's if we have you know they go in and have services and so they can this group can do this if someone else through the window, but you know they're gonna, you know what I mean, something like that. So I just wish they were, and I don't think that's a BPU, I think that is just a community sure. issue and concern that we have. And I just think we just gotta go back to just those good old fashioned values about neighbors helping neighbors, community helping community, and everything like that too. But I think um I think BPU needs to be very clear on what they are what they're what they can do, first of all, <laughs> legally what they can do sure. and do those things well. And I think that is that is what I would like to see. Know what you can do and do it well. No, that's fair. For sure. <clears throat> One of the things I guess about uh, the communications, uh, and I know uh, I received our, uh, the newsletter just last week, and it had great information. But the more you're able to push information to our uh, our um, citizens versus pull, uh, meaning that they have to go out and get it. Uh, probably, probably we're better off uh, if we can push it to them rather than demand that they pull it or access it. Hey, I know, don't, don't disagree at all. And that's what we were talking about earlier about, you know, how, what, what BPU's engagement looks like on next door. And and BPU uh, has really stepped up its efforts to push valuable information out on next door. I mean, I I do read the comments that we get, which are always entertaining. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but you know, and that's but 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 we do get engagement from it. And I mean, and not necessarily it's all bad. It's you know, I actually saw people on there today defending. BPU that I'm pretty sure they weren't employees, and I was like, "Good Lord, somebody out there doesn't think for the devil, right?" Um, you kind of pick your battles. I just look at it. As no, I, I don't. Know. But you know what I'm saying? It's like you don't want to get into it and and, and just oh. get a little higher. But and then, but at the same time, if, if people are not engaging, it's going to continue to just like spread. If somebody like pulls the cold weather rule and actually put it, I mean, that's helpful information. Yeah. Like if a person didn't know where that was, this person did, they went, screenshot it, put it there their arm. And so, and, and that's helpful stuff. And you're right though, Mike, that, that you know, to push out information. And I, I think, again, we're struggling with how to reach all of our demographics. And we know this reaches one. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I, I think email reaches sort of the middle and we might be struggling with our youngest demographic and, and how to reach them. Um, I, I, I'm not even sure we even have a handle on uh, that at this point, but um, a, lot of the, a lot of us are on ring too. There's a lot of ring cameras around. And I'm gonna tell you, so, I mean, it's really helpful when and they share information all the time about emergencies and like you know doing for uh fourth of july and being safe and stuff like that too and all those things like that but the ring i mean it's proven really, you can set it up how far you want to go out in the community and and so it, they, that is another opportunity that they do share things believe it or not efficiency type things or whatever's happening around and that is your area but you can kind of map out where you want it to go does anybody else have a ring in here anybody care now? Anybody? And everything, but I my group is really active. They will they will jump on there and say you know different things and, and share. But I think it's very similar to next door. It's kind of really in your you know, but it's a really good way to I think to get things out. I, I do know that that I believe BQ has be has started a um, an outage text program mm -hmm. um, to notify 
our customers about it just via text message. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody in here is carrying weeds. And, um, you know, one of the things I think BPU has struggled with for a long time is making sure that all of our customers have up to date information, including their cell phone number on their account. Um, you know, I mean, if, if we've all been with BPU for 20 plus years or whatever it is, we probably haven't updated our information in a while. And that's something to remind people to do all the time, right? Um, because utilities are always finding, you know, new and, um, you know, improved ways to get communication, particularly about outages, you know, through the And the EU is known to get on the cell phone. So. That's right. I know you, you got to send me the one that says you're going to be cut off. I know. Pay that bill. <laughs> Well, if you call in, they do a really good job, and you say, do you want to call back at this number? And they'll remind you, and then they will, and they will call you back to the check and see if your power, because I know my power went out for an hour uh, full day at the end of the Chiefs game, the, the previous Saturday, when it was like, yeah. And so, yeah, it went out right in the fourth quarter, and, and everything. <laughs> but they won. I, yeah, I, heard, okay. I heard fireworks. So I said, oh, and I looked on my phone, I'm like, oh, they won. <laughs> because oh, that was fireworks. Oh, yeah, fire. I, I live down town. I live down here, and so when the Chiefs win, there's fireworks and other. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that we that we hear quite a lot of. But yes, so that's how I knew they won because I was without power. But yeah, <laughs> little things, little things that excite us down here in the in the Northeast. And <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, um, I think that's in a lot of neighborhoods because. I live by uh, Legends, and they. Uh, I I didn't watch the game, but I knew that the Chiefs won when I heard the fireworks. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's interesting that we did close proximity, but I followed my power. I know, right? Well, it shows you, and that's what's so cool about it. You can get on the map, and it shows you exactly where the outage is. I and every the outage map all oh, me too. I'm like a nerd, yes. but I'm I'm a nerd. I want to know where the power outages are. So, but yeah, it but that map is really good and it kind of shows you or whatever, but that they will call you back though. How is your yeah? Yeah. I don't know what song before you call me. Yeah, So I take it you didn't lose power that night. Yeah. Not that night. Oh, okay. Another night. <laughs> just for an hour, like you said. Yeah, just an hour. 6 to 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. So, uh, when I'm going to get ready for work, uh, I, I went ahead. Thank God, when you have a water heater, of course, it stays on there. Work, yeah. It'll take a nice one. Yep. <laughs> In the dark. <laughs> hey, that's how it's going to flashlights and the phone. <laughs> that's right. Um, so, so I, I think we got some good information there. Um, let us let us marinate a little bit on, um, you know, maybe best ways to to get the energy efficiency information, useful information. You know, some of it we don't know yet. Number one, I want to push the information out to you guys first, mm -hmm. and then once you guys see what these programs look like and how this is going to work. Um, maybe you guys have ideas from there. And like I said, I mean, don't don't hesitate. Um, I know we're meeting on a quarterly basis, but don't hesitate to email, call in between, and and you know provide your ideas. Um, you know, one of the things we've got coming up in the next agenda item is you know some of the other community identified issues. And uh, one of the ambassadors asked me about you know sort of the our our tree uh, pruning and and limb removal clinics. Um, the BPU does, and um, you know, <clears throat> BPU has made um, unbelievable strides in this area in the last uh, probably five to six to eight years or so. Um, and but but there's still work to be done. And you know, I know that we've included this information before in the BPU connection. I'm sure we have something on our website, but. It, you know, what, what this ambassador brought to me was, look, you've got, you know, ask one out there, you've got maybe right tree company or whoever else we contract with out there. And, you know, they're taking the things they can reach from the streets, but like a lot of times, you know, you're backing out or whatever it is, because that's what causes the real problem. You know, you've got lines go down or whatever. 
And, and what do we do to address that? Well, I know there's a plan to address it, and it's on a schedule. Um, but that information needs to be shared with the public probably more than we are do. Because I know folks think the line, you know, part of the, the tree went down, the wind went down, they're on the lines, nobody ever does anything about this, right? We can't do anything about this. Well, CBD does a lot about this and has made a very concerted effort to do this. And if you look at the data about how this has affected the outages that we can actually experience, this, um, it's sort of unbelievable. Um, understanding that there's still work to be done, but just the improvement that DP has made by what they call what we call vegetation management, um, it, you know, it's 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 pretty impressive. So that was one thing. But I don't. I mean, you guys have had some time to think about other issues that, other than what we've talked about here tonight, and certainly other than the one the other ambassador brought to me. What other issues are you guys seeing out there that? You know that we might need to, you know, address in some way. One of the items that is on of uh, the actual BPU bill, but I'm not sure if it actually fits in here, is the waste management. Yeah, no, doesn't fit with us. Uh, sorry, it's a UG charge. <laughs> Uh, honestly, it is, it's under the Public Works Department, it's a unified government. So your waste management charge is your draft removal. And certainly, no. BPU, I mean, as you know, I mean, BPU um, at this point in time has multiple unified government charges on the BPU bill. And um, we are a, a billing agency for the unified government. We collect and remit those charges back to you if I don't. Okay, thank you. Sure. So those, uh, any complaints in that area should go directly to the Unified Government or uh, Wyandotte County? To the Unified Government, that's right. And, and uh, those in particular probably should go through 311. Uh, but I will tell you that the bills now, because DPU has also made a concerted effort to completely, at least on the same bill, segregate what are unified government charges or what are DPU charges. And so anything you see on the bill under unified government charges, although folks continue to call DPU's customer service department, we can't answer those questions. We actually have to defer you to the unified government. And nobody likes that here in Wyandotte County. Nobody likes that we're pointing fingers between, you know, the, the agencies, but we, we don't have a choice of BPU because we literally cannot answer those questions. We don't know. Okay. Thank you very much. I just wanted to uh, get that clarified. Sure. So that's been an issue. In, it's like when I was with the UG, UG sends out the tax bill. The UG is only 44% of the tax bill. We get 100% of the complaints because people aren't smart enough or, or to read the tax bill and find out that, oh, the school's getting this much that because the community college schools and state get 65% of those tax dollars, the property tax payers are pay. I spent 18 years trying to educate people on that fact. And they just, and it's the same with your bill. Your bill could not be laid out any clearer. Thank you. As to what the charges are, I mean, you did the pie chart, you did the flip. I don't know how they can get to them if they got an individual bill for every one of those services. Okay, you get the BPU bill for your water electric. Well, it's coming. Then you get the waste management bill. Then you get a bill from water pollution control. That's right. Then you get a bill. They'll really scream then. Well, I, you know, so what, <clears throat> what the folks on both sides of the street are working on right now. Um, the staff at BPU and the staff in the Unified Government uh, is to actually segregate um, the charges separately into a different bill, not on, not on BPU's bill. And uh, I'm praying that they are due at separate times of the month because that doesn't do anybody any good if you're still getting $500 in the at the exact same time. Doesn't help anybody out. Right. The budget, right? right. Um, as I understand it, as I sit here today, I believe that the pilot um, will remain on the BPU bill, but we'll see. 
Yeah, I, you know, and, and I had way back discussions with Mark Langer about that. I don't know how you separate that because the, the, it's tied to the utility use. I mean, it's a little tax payment, but um, but putting the title, you know, we can putting we can the, that all day long. putting the pilot on all the other services as well, which is what we do. That's a problem. That's a problem. And, 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 uh, but I don't know how you can make it feel any clearer. And and it's the same thing. I used to do the dollar bills that showed this many cents go to the schools, this many cents, and people just like to, you know, I mean, they, uh, this is a really valuable thing. I did a you know the citizen newsletter the years I was there, and we found people really liked it and they used it. Uh, the other thing we did, and you, I don't know, we did the e newsletter, which was a subscriber based email we use constant contact and we were cheap but we did that weekly and basically you could pull little pieces out of people were timely with an email and it's really an expensive to do or you'd have staff time to put it together but the cost of it it's kind of prorated so i think we had by the time i left i think we had five thousand subscribers which you know again doesn't go to everybody in the county but five thousand subscribers and i think it cost us less than thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. So that can be more you can deal with more timely issues than coming up just four times like this, but and I know these are expensive, but yeah, and I, know I think it's very worthwhile. It's really uh, I actually have asked for um that I don't receive a paper copy at home just because I prefer soft copies of, of everything. So I can always go back and reverse. It's on the website, so I don't personally I don't need it. And that's the way I do. And what I do wonder is, and I'm I'm confident that Bill and Jerry and his team are working toward this. I don't know how many uh, customers actually do paperless bills with us. Um, like I don't know what the percentage is, but um, those that do paperless bill are more inclined probably to receive things electronically. And so, a cut down the cost of this, but b do something like you're saying. It's like I wouldn't mind getting a link to the email from. I mean, I get them. I get them down from the UGB. Yeah. You know. So yeah. Yeah. So just just a thought. But that that way you can do weekly contact custom. And again, when we first started that back in that's four, I think, but after I got here, we I I pirated the emails. I stole the emails from every place I could. The chamber to get a list. You know, started and it started with like. 300 people and then it grew to 4,000 people. Sure. So, but well, and, but we have, you know, we have a relationship with every customer that we have, right? Sure. And so those are those are communications that, you know, we can certainly, um, you know, I mean, to the extent a customer, you know, opts out of receiving them, mm -hmm. um, you know, we already have an established business relationship with them. Right. The other thing on that, on the Community meetings, I would suggest livable neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can get dozens of neighborhood leaders in one room all at the same time and uh, make a presentation to them. They carry those messages back to their individual. Because last time I looked at something like 100 different neighborhood organizations. Well, and, and David Melhoff actually does do a presentation to them. Good, okay. Um, often. Um, and, and when I, I spoke with him earlier today, we talked about this a little bit, and um, we're going to make a concerted effort that um, one of us, we two don't know it yet, one of us is going to attend, um, you know, some of these meetings with him to sort of um, bolster the message, right? I mean, right. I, I'm, I love David, but I'm, I'm sure they're getting tired of hearing from David, so, you know. Put a new face up there. Yeah, and local neighborhoods puts out their own newsletters, and so you might be able to get them to put some BPU stuff in those. Again, that goes out to those organized neighborhoods. So they have done that for us. Good way to spread the news. Well, yeah. you know, like the Strawberry Hill, you know, Association of Neighborhood, uh, their Facebook page um, that, that we were talking about earlier, Karen, you know, um, the BPU connection is something we should be sharing through that. You know, we have an electronic version of it. It's something we should be sharing, you know, through organizations, you know, through groups like that as well. I mean, that is another demographic of this community. It's not like, you know, it's, it's, it hits us middle-aged people. 
Yeah, I am. Um, I get the uh, uh, Livable Neighborhoods weekly newsletter, and it consists of a bunch of images. So I just download the images and then post them uh, as a you know a post on Facebook. It's um, and it's especially nice when they're both in Spanish and in English, and I just post both um, photos. Um, and I think I've seen things from BPU there. I know that there's been um, information in their newsletter about, um, you know, utility help and stuff like that. So, For sure. um, all right. Well, in the interest of, of keeping us on the schedule, I know we are uh, we are at the conclusion um, of the scheduled time. And um, uh, my friend, I think you were going to say something about some trees and branches down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't forget you. <laughs> they did choose me. I just got my cut like the month before, and then they came out and cut all the neighbor's tree and threw them in my yard. And when I called and told them, they said, we don't uh, ground up with your trees anymore. They used to put them in a, so what, are they going to get back to doing something about that? I mean, because it, it was getting my work. If you hear somebody to come help me throw them over the neighbor's yard, I could go to his tree. Well, I mean, so what was it? Did you contract with the business? Yeah, they said they were cutting them off the wire. They said they were. So what, what was going on? Was it the regular schedule language or was it going to the storm? I guess it was the power line. I guess it, well, they said they were on the power line. I appreciate them cutting them off the power line, but I told those were. Those trees are in his yard and they're his trees. And I just got my cut and they threw them all over my yard. Let me follow up with you after this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I really appreciate the lively discussion yet again tonight. Um, I get again in the meantime, you guys have emails, you guys have my phone number. You know, don't hesitate to use it. Let's keep brainstorming, you know, about how best we can get this information out to actually be used in the community and be useful in the community. Um, I know you guys all do a good job of, of um, you know, impacting your individual neighborhoods, and we certainly appreciate that. Um, but what better can we do? You know, that's going to be the theme, I think, throughout this year. What what could be to be better um, to get the information, not only get the information out there, but to get the information actually, you know, um, put it in a useful format and actually be used by um, our constituents that, that could use it. So I think that was just really quick. Like, Jim has one of the top issues, like with the trees and the, and the, uh, and the street lights being out. So um, I don't know if there's a way to, like, if there's a, like a season that they are out for, or so you can kind of do more of a, a really good effort. Or um, I know some of the other groups, um, I know Groundwork Energy, they were doing some um, some audits and you know whatever. So maybe working again with some of the nonprofits and, and different communities and neighborhood groups and kind of so they can just really be an openness so they can share that. So it just be more of an awareness. So if you are seeing these trees, I just again I just don't want us to be so reactive to everything that's happening. So if there's something that BPU can have like their top, you know, like their like, like their their, you know, power five and you know, is that street lights and tree removal or, you know, whatever that may be, and just really push it for that for that time period or that quarter maybe or something to kind of do that. And I don't know where the power five come. I don't know if you have five things that you hear about the most, but you know, I just think that, you know, that could be something that neighborhoods and other nonprofits and other community people can get can get behind more eyes and ears and boots on the ground. Kind of address some of those issues or at least bring it to your attention so that they can eventually be addressed, if that makes sense. I don't know, though. No, I think it does. Um, I don't know what everybody else thinks, but it's actually a good idea. I don't even know if I can come up with five, but <laughs> I know we can come up with two. I know. <laughs> and, and it's unfortunate because, I mean, I think you guys know this. We we perform maintenance on street lights on behalf of the new bike down on the It's, um, you know, it's not our stuff, but, but we, we do perform that maintenance at no charge. So, 
And they do have a schedule, you know, yeah, but yeah. I know if something in my neighborhood happens or something that somebody turns in and it's really not on their schedule, they're pretty good to try to break out yeah. what they do and squeeze it in. So, um, but yeah. Not, no, but like you said, to your point, having a recommendation, know where to go to, and then, like you said, and then at least we can, we can document that that's been. That's, yeah, it's a lot of people will say, well, I turned it in, but mm -hmm. it's been a long time. So just for me to know basically about how long it takes just crew to get yeah, around sure. would be helpful so that I would have some right. to say that. Yeah. No, that's right. Absolutely. All right, next next meeting, next scheduled meeting is April 22nd, that is a Monday at 6 30 p.m. Um, I will send out a reminder email long before the day before. Sorry about that one. But no, I, I will send that out. And, but again, keep the line communication open and, and uh, we'll move on from here. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, the meeting's in there. Yeah, fine.